Our beautiful planet is 71% water. The oceans and seas are wide and deep. And to date, we've explored less than 5% of them in total. There could be thousands of new creatures down there in the depths waiting to be discovered. But there are also many buried and forgotten treasures to find, too. Sometimes we forget the terrifying power of nature. And when we do, it reminds us by taking things we've made and swallowing them whole, holding them there for us to find hundreds, if not thousands of years later. Truly, the sea is a place that keeps its secrets. Here are some of the most amazing things that have been lost and then rediscovered underwater. Over 300 years ago, British and Spanish ships did battle off the coast of Colombia. The British came away victorious and a ship named the San Jose was sunk. It was a very expensive loss from the Spanish point of view. The three-masted galleon was carrying a cargo of gold and precious jewels scavenged from South America and headed back to Spain to be sold by the Spanish crown. In modern terms, the value of the haul was over $17 billion. It was a Colombian operation that finally located the wreck in 2015, close to the port of Cartagena and experts believe it's the most valuable shipwreck ever found. Now there's a question about who gets to keep the treasure. Technically, the Spanish have a right to ownership, as the ship was originally their property. However, the fact that it was located within Colombian waters also gives the Colombians the right to claim it for themselves. That dispute still hasn't been resolved, and the ship and all its cargo remain underwater, with the Colombians treating the precise location as a state secret. Lake Baikal, in the region of Irkutsk, has a habit of collecting vehicles large and small, and doing it in big numbers. The roads near the lake are treacherous in cold weather, meaning many a road vehicle has lost its way and plunged into the icy waters. It's not just road vehicles, though. Objects seem to fall from the sky into the lake, as if the waters have a magnetic pull. To give Lake Baikal its full credit, it's the deepest and oldest lake in the world and contains an astonishing 22% of the world's fresh surface water. At its deepest, it's over 5,000 feet below water. That's a lot of space for things to get lost. In total, 92 cars, 18 boats, 6 snowmobiles, 2 motorcycles, several tractors, a helicopter, and a full-sized plane have been pulled out of the water within the past 15 years. There's still a lot of vehicles down there in what locals call the underwater cemetery, and getting them out is a priority. Leaking fuels and decaying materials make the water of the lake poisonous if they stay down there for too long. When we talk about finding new kinds of animals underwater, we imagine a species of fish we've never encountered before. But divers exploring the Black Sea in Odessa made a startling discovery when they went down to explore what lies beneath, a prehistoric rhinoceros preserved as a fossil. The beast was over 10 feet long with fearsome fangs, as opposed to the horns that we see on the head of rhinos today. This animal is an ancestor of the modern rhino, and to give it its proper name, it's a Chilateria. The rhino is just the beginning of what scientists hope will be a number of amazing finds in the Odessa area. Wooden buildings have also been located, which finally prove that the Black Sea was once dry land and inhabited by humans. We now believe that a powerful flood from the Mediterranean Sea sank the land some 7,500 years ago. Until we found the San Jose, the Nuestra Señora de Atoca was the most valuable shipwreck in human history. Discovered in 1985 by the famous adventurer Mel Fisher, the find was the culmination of years of determined search. Finding the wreck had been a personal dream of Fisher's, and when he did, it made his family's fortune. The Spanish galleon sank during a storm in 1622 off the coast of Florida, there were more than 40 tons of valuables on board when the ship went down, including plenty of gold, silver, and jewels. So far, $450 million worth of goods has been raised from the bottom. But that's only part of the story. The ship broke apart when it sank, and only some of it has been found. There are many valuable items listed on the ship's cargo, which are still missing, and there are still people out looking for them. 
In fact, the Fisher family offer adventure holidays for professional divers who want to take part in the search. Sometimes things are lost when the sea floods a land that used to be dry and buries what used to stand there. Other times the sea comes and then goes again over time, slowly revealing what it once hid. That's the case with the Aral Sea, which has been drying out year after year since the 1970s. Now much of it is desert and explorers have rushed to the area to see what's been revealed. What they found is a complex and detailed picture of life in that area 10 to 20,000 years ago, before the sea initially formed. A whole village covering five hectares, which we now call Aral Asar, is slowly giving up its secrets. There's evidence of highly developed flour milling practices once occurring here, with 14 millstones discovered. The remains of rice fields have been identified all around the area, along with coins that date the settlement to the Golden Horde period, which suggests that the sea levels have changed dramatically over time. What the water takes, sometimes it gives back. That's the case for this beautiful Mexican cathedral, which was lost at the bottom of a reservoir in Chiapas for 50 years. The cathedral itself is over 500 years old and was constructed by Spanish settlers in the 16th century. The Temple of Santiago, as it's known, is a building that once stood proud and tall, with a bell tower 48 feet above the ground. Despite the amazing architecture, the church was never used as much as the builders hoped it would be. They initially believed the area around it would soon be a large city, but the population never arrived in big numbers. Eventually, plague struck the residents who did live in the vicinity, and the area was abandoned in the 18th century. The land stood empty until a hydroelectric dam was built in the 1960s and drowned it. It took a severe drought for the structure to emerge from the waters, and it's proved a popular tourist attraction, with local boating companies ferrying people across the water for a closer look. Our Earth is built on tectonic plates, which shift and move over time. That's how earthquakes and volcanoes appear. Sometimes the movements are much bigger. We know that the continents we now live on were once much closer together, and in some cases even connected. That all changed millions of years ago. When it did, we lost the largest continent of them all. A team of Swedish and South African researchers have discovered zircon in the rocks of the Indian Ocean floor, near Mauritius. Zircon is only ever present in ancient layers of continental crust. The scientists are confident that this was once the almost mythical continent of Gondwana, a giant continent that existed between India and Madagascar. It began to disintegrate 200 million years ago and finally collapsed and vanished 84 million years ago. Mauritius is either the only piece of this old giant that still exists above water or it's a new piece of land that's grown from the shell of an old one. Not every shipwreck is down at the bottom of the ocean. Some are sat just below the waterline, close enough to see but just out of reach. That's the case for the schooner known as Sweepstakes, which is on the bottom of Big Tub Harbor in Ontario, Canada. Sweepstakes was carrying coal when it was damaged near Cove Island in 1885. A rescue operation was mounted and it was towed to the harbor, but the damage was too severe because the wooden hull is almost perfectly preserved. It's a very popular tourist attraction. Glass bottom boats take visitors directly over the top of the wreck and it's sometimes possible to dive down for a closer look. A few years ago, divers were even allowed to enter the boat and look around inside, but it's now been fenced off. Exposure to oxygen bubbles from divers have caused the wreck to degrade over time, and now efforts are being made to preserve the site for future generations. The SS Baron Gouch is a shipwreck that should never have been a shipwreck. The proud Austro-Hungarian passenger ship, which was a full 300 feet long, was built in 1908 and conscripted into military service after the outbreak of World War I in 1914. The massive steam-engined vessel was to serve as a supply ship. On the 13th of August 1914, the ship was sunk. The captain of the ship was asleep in his cabin, 
The first officer was supposed to be in charge, but he left the bridge without the captain's permission, leaving commands in the hand of a young and inexperienced officer named Tenza. The Austro-Hungarian army had been laying mines around the area the ship was sailing in with the intention of protecting a nearby port town, but Tenza's poor direction resulted in the ship sailing miles north of its intended position and into the minefield. When he finally realized his error and turned around, it was too late. The ship struck a mine and sank within seven minutes of impact. The entire command crew later stood trial for their negligence, and the shipwreck wasn't discovered until 1958. 13 feet below the water, off the coast of Peloponnesus in southern Greece, lays the oldest and most remarkable sunken town in the entire world. It's over 5,000 years old, and yet somehow we don't even know its name. We just know it thrived and prospered before being sunk by an earthquake some 3,000 years ago. The city is amazingly well-preserved and almost unbelievably well-designed with a layout that's more efficient than many major population centers in the modern world. There are streets and roads clearly visible, with two-story houses built along them. The houses once had their own gardens and were served by water coming from basic pipes. The presence of large storage containers, along with clay artifacts and statues, lead us to believe that this was once a major center of commerce for the ancient Minoan civilization, but even that's only a best guess. What we can say for certain is that whoever built it was hundreds of years ahead of any other civilization around at the time. It's a mystery we may never solve. You may have visited dozens of museums, but you'll never have seen anything like the Museo Atlantico, a fully functional underwater museum off the coast of Lanzarote. It's the latest ingenious work of British artist Jason de Care Taylor a marine expert and diver who's made a career out of working below the waves. Taylor has created and submerged over 300 sculptures into the Atlantic Ocean in an attempt to draw attention to climate change and the need for conservation work to preserve our planet's environment. All of Taylor's sculptures are made from specially designed materials which don't corrode or dissolve into the water, meaning they pose no hazard to the plants or fish which swim around them. The star of the show is the human gyre, more than 200 statues of human beings arranged in a circle, life-sized and representing people of all ages and backgrounds. The circular structure has been specifically designed to resemble a reef, making it inviting for marine life to cluster around it. Taylor says the human gyre is a reminder that life on our planet began in the seas and that both we and our world still depend upon it for our survival. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.